Since hitting the hip hop scene in 1997 with his group Capone and Noriega, rapper who is now one of the biggest podcasters, Nori, has been making his own slang popular like getting people to call their close friend slime, a term he had been using since 2001. He also made popular music being the main solo rapper to make it cool to hop on beats by the Pharrell Williams and Chad Hugo duo The Neptunes. These days, Nori considers himself to be more of a retired rapper, and he instead identifies now as a music executive and host of the massively popular podcast Drink Champs, a show he co-hosts with DJ Effin, where they've been documenting the life stories of rap legends to salute them and give them their flowers why they can still smell them. They've made this phrase so popular in rap that they actually have been presenting their guests with golden flower plaques as a reward for their services to the culture. Drink Champs has grown into an influential brand that chimes in on current topics and memories of the past while getting guests drunk enough on camera to become way more transparent than they would if they were sober. In addition to his work on Drink Champs, Nori has also gotten his wife Neri involved in some of his endeavors, including their TV debut with VH1's hit Love & Hip Hop Miami franchise, and then later their appearance on Wii TV's Marriage Bootcamp Hip Hop Edition on Season 16. Nori appears to be on a mission to become another one of hip hop's really like financial business titans. So how exactly did this guy from Queens first launch his rap career, which was relatively short-lived, fall off, and then become one of the biggest hip-hop podcasts in the world. Born on September 6, 1977, Victor James Santiago Jr., also known as Noriega, was raised in Queens, New York, to an African-American mother and a Puerto Rican father. Nori would make his hip-hop debut in 1995 with fellow Queens rapper Capone. The two rappers from Queens first met in 1992 while they were both incarcerated at the time. Capone was serving time for attempted murder in New York's Greenhaven prison, while in prison, the two established equal grounds for their love of basketball as well as hip-hop. When Nori met Capone, he had already secured his alias due to his early years as a local DJ. It was during their time in prison that Santiago, Nori, would acquire his rap moniker. In an interview with Chronic Magazine, Nori recalls, I read a book up north and they used to call me Noriega here and there. That book was so large that people in my house, his cell block, thought I wasn't going to read it. So after I read it, my people tested me on it and said I was the name of the book. The book that Nori was referring to was a set of readings on Panamanian dictator Manuel Noriega. This book would inspire the rap moniker that Capone would introduce his future partner as in social circles. Now while the two had a mutual love of hip-hop at the time of their incarceration, neither knew the other could rap. Not long after they met each other in prison, Capone would go on to make parole and Nori would find himself completing his sentence alone. Following their release from prison, and once the two discovered that the other could rap, they decided that they should begin making music together and did so under the duo name of Capone and Noriega, or CNN. In October of 1995, the rap duo appeared in the Source magazine's unsigned hype column for talented up-and-coming rappers without record deals. To this day, many credit the pair for reinvigorating East Coast underground rap sounds along with Queens neighbors Mob Deep, having come from New York's largest borough of Queens, Capone and Noriega also come from a borough with real history and heritage in hip-hop, one that contained the talents of other street narrators such as Cool G Rap, Nas, and their mentor, Tragedy. Not long after they decided to make music together, the two would join other MCs, quickly becoming some of New York's hottest. A year after they began working together, Capone and Noriega dropped their debut album titled The War Report on Penalty Entertainment, which was formerly known as Penalty Recordings. Upon its release, The War Report received critical and commercial acclaim in spite of its lyrical themes that profile the duo's real-life experiences with drug and gang violence. Among many in prominent hip-hop circles, the album received praise for its use of New York City's traditional grimy boom-bap sound when that classic approach to the culture was falling out of favor in the industry and being replaced by what some believed was a more danceable sound. The album was also applauded for its numerous references to the knowledge of the 5% Nation, also referred to as the Nation of Gods and Earths, and this was a spiritual and cultural movement originally founded by Clarence Smith in Harlem, New York, in 1964, which explored the concept that black people are the original founders of planet Earth, and if you've probably heard the term black man is God, it comes from this group. And so therefore they are the fathers and the mother Earths of civilization. Like many of their hip-hop peers, namely rappers such as Big Daddy Kane, Brand Nubian, Nas, and Wu-Tang Clan, Capone and Noriega would make multiple references to the 5% Nation throughout their wordplay, 
as in the case of using phrases such as sub G, word is bond, drop in science, and represent. This practice would allow the duo the ability to convey the richness of their storytelling with street knowledge and stories of survival to cement themselves in New York's underground hip hop community. With the release of The War Report, many critics argue that Capone and Noriega helped the late 1990s rap audiences put the focus back on inner city working class struggles, a move that would ultimately lead to the rise of rappers such as Jadakiss, DMX, and 50 Cent in the early 2000s. Capone and Noriega witnessed their work peak at number 21 on the Billboard 200, and its leading singles, Legal Life, Closer, and Tony, Top of New York, each chart on the hot R&B, hip-hop singles and tracks chart. Interestingly enough, as the duo quickly became credited with reintroducing street elements back to the hip-hop landscape, they also garnered the reputation of helping to fuel the rivalry that existed between the East and West Coast of hip-hop by generating a direct retaliation to Snoop Dogg and the Dog Pound single New York, New York, which was a diss track and calculated satire of the East Coast, apparent waning credibility within hip-hop culture. In their response, a recording titled LA LA, Capone and Noriega called upon Tragedy and Mob Deep as featured artists. In the accompanying music video, the rappers are depicted as kidnapping members of the Dog Pound and forcing them into the trunk of a car before tying them up and throwing them off a New York bridge. The moment which many argued occurred at the peak of the feud between labels as Death Row and Bad Boy Entertainment reminded hip hop audiences of many altercations between the coasts that continued throughout the 90s and into the early 2000s. Despite forging a lucrative career with his partner Nori, unfortunately, just as things were beginning to look up for the duo, Capone was once again sentenced to prison after the courts deemed that he had violated his parole. This devastating news came down in 1996, just before their album The War Report was released the following year. This decision meant that Nori was left to complete the record without his partner in hip-hop, and thankfully, while Capone couldn't be there, Nori secured the help of Mob Deep and Tragedy Gaddafi, formerly known as Intelligent Hoodlum, to complete the project. In the case of Tragedy Gaddafi, not only did he share production credits alongside the likes of Marley Mall, DJ Clark Kent, and Buck Wild, but his flow was featured on over half of the album. Now, while Tragedy Gaddafi has never been an official permanent member of Capone and Noriega, this project would mark an important relationship for the three, as they're close collaborators even to this day. Many critics agree that so much of what made The War Report a critically acclaimed project was due to Tragedy Gaddafi's contribution. While Nori was waiting for Capone to be released from prison, he decided to embark on his journey as a solo artist. To begin this process, he decided to release his solo debut album titled Nori in 1998, which represented a shortening of his name and the acronym Niggas on the Ron Eaton. The album, which was also the reason that the rapper shortened and changed his name to Nori, went on to be a massive success, even greater than the duo's debut album. In addition to being certified as platinum by the RIAA, the album charted at number 3 on the Billboard 200, with guest appearances from fellow New York City rappers such as Nas, Cool G Rap, Big Pun, and Busta Rhymes, and with a slightly slicker production style than The War Report, the album helped bring in hip-hop's new and future sound with tracks produced by then-up-and-coming producers The Neptunes and Swizz Beats. The album's singles would go on to score on the charts as well, for example, The Neptunes hit Super Thug, reached number 36 on the Billboard Hot 100. Encouraged by the massive success of his solo album, Nori decided to release a second solo album in 1999, titled Melvin Flint the Hustler. Unfortunately, unlike his first solo album, the second attempt at a solo career was only a moderate success. Statistically, the album reached the top 10 of the Billboard 200, and it eventually became certified gold by the RIAA. Among the album's most successful singles was Oh No, which was also produced by the Neptunes. The same year as Nori's second solo album release, Capone was also released from prison. The two subsequently began recording music together again. This time, they released their second CNN album titled The Reunion. Unfortunately, the album was not well received, and it failed to match the commercial and financial success of the duo's debut or Nori's solo projects. While Capone remained present throughout the production stage of the project, just before the record was set to be released, he was unfortunately sent to prison yet again for violating a probation sentence on gun possession. Some argue that Capone being sent away was one of the major reasons the duo lost commercial appeal, even as his time in prison strengthened the duo's street credibility. These legal challenges meant that the two had to make an important decision, and they inevitably decided to go on a hiatus. Fans wouldn't hear back from the duo until 2009 when they would come together to release another album. 
Following the release of this album, not only did the duo have to deal with the critical and commercial failure of their album, but they had also become disillusioned by their move to Tommy Boy Records. The story behind this move was that in 2001, Capone and Noriega had decided to leave Tommy Boy and instead move to Def Jam Recordings. While some might have argued that this was a good move given Def Jam's reputation as the premier hip-hop label, the trouble for the duo was that this move led the pair to lose all rights to the Capone and Noriega name, given that their former label claimed that by breaking their contract early, the duo still owed Tommy Boy more Capone and Noriega recordings. After the loss of their duo name, Capone and Noriega decided to abbreviate their name to CNN. In addition, from that time forward, Noriega was billed exclusively as Nori. In the interim, Nori would go on to release his third solo album in 2002, titled God's Favorite. Thankfully for Nori, his third album became a massive success. Not only did it peak at number 3 on the Billboard 200 chart, but it was later certified platinum. Among the album's recordings, the song titled Nothing, which was produced by the Neptunes, became one of Nori's biggest hits and his highest chart topper, reaching number 10 on the Billboard Hot 100. Beginning in the early 2000s, Nori also began changing his musical focus and dabbling in a new sound inspired by the Jamaican genre of reggae. The new sound would come to be known as reggaeton, making Nori an early American artist when it comes to jumping in that lane. In 2004, Nori began recording Spanish language songs and he would eventually release a single titled Oye Mi Canto, a tribute to his Puerto Rican heritage coming from his father's side of the family. Once this song hit the charts, it became an instant success, peaking at number 12 on the Billboard Hot 100. The song was initially intended to be a single featured on his upcoming album, which was titled One Fan A Day, but unfortunately for him, the album was never released. Instead, Nori decided to release a whole reggaeton album in 2006 titled Nori y la Familia, Ya Tu Sabe. The album, which was released under Jay-Z's Rock La Familia, had both English and Spanish language tracks and included the lead singles Oye Mi Canto and Mas Maiz, Sadly, the album did not attain the same level of success or chart nearly as well as any of Nori's previous solo albums. In fact, it only reached number 82 on the Billboard 200. This focus on his Latino heritage also led the rapper to change his name temporarily to Papi, an acronym for Power Always Proves Intelligence, in 2013, at the same time that he released his album titled Student of the Game. As the 2000s continued, Nori continued to release solo albums. By 2007, Nori released his CD, DVD, No Reality, via a joint venture with his own thugged out Militainment label and Baby Grand Records. The album featured guest appearances from the likes of Swiss Beats as producer, and then rap contributions from Jadakiss, 3 Six Mafia, Kanye West, Pharrell, Mob Deep's Prodigy, Bun B, True Life, David Banner, Corrupt, and Capone. Two years later, Nori would go on to release his album, Sorry, an album that, interestingly enough, Nori would go on to denounce and ask fans not to purchase. According to Nori, this album is a reference to his stage name and his first name, which is an acronym for Niggas on the Run Eaton. In this case, Sorry stood for Still on the Run Eaton. And the first time the term was used was in late 2007 when Nori released a song entitled Still on the Run Eaton featuring Lil Wayne. Beginning in 2009, Nori decided to collaborate with Capone once again with a total of two albums. The duo would release their third studio album titled Channel 10. Yet again, the material that the two rappers put together would moderately chart. It reached number 136 on the Billboard 200 this time. A year later, they would release a fourth Capone and Noriega album titled The War Report 2, with the leading single titled Hood Pride that featured the R&B star Faith Evans. A year later in 2011, June, Fellow rapper Busta Rhymes announced on his Twitter account that he had officially signed Nori to his newly founded record label titled Conglomerate Records. Two years later, in September of 2013, Nori took to MTV to announce his next album, a project titled Melvin Flint 2 The Final Hustle. He told audiences that this project would be his final album, and once it was released he would stop touring and releasing solo albums. Instead he would be focusing on being a music executive and CEO. While Nori did announce that this would be his last album, fans never got that album. After a lengthy career in the music business, with most of the latter half being him slowly falling off, Nori teamed up with DJ Effin in 2009 to begin transitioning into a career in broadcasting. Together, the two artists began hosting a satellite radio show for Sirius XM called Militainment Crazy Raw Radio. The title of the show gave equal weight to and was drawn from Nori's Militainment brand, Effin's Crazy Hood, and to 66 Raw, the channel on Sirius XM which carried the show and this show ran from 2009 to 2011. In addition to his time on the radio, Nori also began appearing on television, 
namely the television series Marriage Boot Camp Hip Hop Edition, where each of the couples who are featured on the series gets counseling and participate in games and challenges, and later Nori showed up on Love & Hip Hop Miami. Married since 2009, rapper Nori and his wife Neri decided in the 2000s to join the broadcasting world by documenting their marriage. Nori claimed that he got involved because he witnessed how the show positively impacted people, particularly those people that he knew closely. And so when he was called to participate, he jumped at the opportunity. When asked what made for a successful marriage, Nori stated, I'm loud and boisterous. I'm always into something. And she's quiet. A lot of times people want to marry, you know, the person, that best friend or the person that acts like a best friend. Really, sometimes it's really, really just about making your life work. Like, you know, in a lot of ways, she's like the opposite of me. And we balance each other out. The couple, each of whom is a huge fan of Marriage Boot Camp, claims that they have watched all iterations of the show and really wanted to be a part of the franchise, especially after seeing their good friend Styles P and his wife on the series. According to Nori's wife, one of the reasons for joining was to deal with their issues head on, she claimed. Nori and I are very private as far as you know. Being in the limelight with our relationship, there's more than what people see. This is an opportunity for us to, you know, tell our problems and get help because we never had counseling before. Some of our issues we died for a long time, and we've been married a long time, and we felt like it was time for us to get a counselor to help us with our issues and for us to be more open with each other. When you're married a long time, either you're going to have a lot of problems because you don't communicate, or things are going to get boring, and we didn't want that to happen to us. While the couple has been married for over 14 years and they've made appearances on television, they're also relatively private. When asked in a 2018 interview on The Breakfast Club about his thoughts on his marriage, Nori stated, You know what it is? Love is best earned or best taken when you're hurt. You have to actually be hurt. You can't love heaven without going through hell, without living through hell. Success isn't good without failure. If you only have success, you'd be the most miserable person in the world. You have to fail sometimes to appreciate it. It's the same thing with love. You gotta love somebody, really, really for real, and be hurt for you to say, you know what, this is it, I'ma chill. As for Nori's time on the famed series Love & Hip Hop, he joined the series in Miami alongside other prominent figures in hip hop, such as Ace Hood, Trina, Trick Daddy, Sukiana, and Amara La Negra. While the series tended to focus on hip hop artists living in Miami and their experiences with the industry, Nori used the series to open up about his family's challenges and pivotal moments of work and home life that the couple faced during their 10-year-long marriage at the time. Nearly five years after the premiere of the radio show Militainment Crazy Raw Radio, Nori reunited with DJ Effin to create and begin hosting one of the biggest hip-hop podcasts that continues to dominate in the space, Drink Champs, on the platform Revolt, Diddy's company. Drink Champs has turned into an entirely new and major chapter in Nori's career. Beginning in March of 2016, Nori and DJ Effin started Drink Champs, with this podcast being a place where they feature a variety of celebrity and hip-hop guests who share their stories of fame and working in the entertainment industry, all while drinking alcohol. In terms of its format, a typical episode of Drink Champs could run two or three hours, during which Nori, DJ Effin, and their interviewees would slowly get drunk. At the top of the interview, Nori and Effin would typically begin by telling their interviewees how much they appreciated them from the perspective of fan and a peer. As the interview progresses, Nori probes his interviewees deeper about elements of their career journey that may not be common knowledge, creating an oral history for current and new fans. Since its start, the Drink Champs podcast has surpassed more than 5 million listens per month. It's also won a series of awards, including the Best Hip Hop Platform at the 2022 BET Hip Hop Awards. And much of the podcast's success can be credited to Nori's down-to-earth personality and his sense of humor, along with his seamless chemistry with DJ Effin the slightly more serious co-host with the mind of a hip-hop historian that balances out the energy as well. Also, the A-list guests can come from the early days of hip-hop in the 70s like Grandmaster Kaz and DJ Red Alert, 80s when hip-hop records started becoming an actual reality with LL Cool J and De La Soul, artists that emerged as stars in the 90s like Busta Rhymes and Nas, along with those who have since passed away like DMX. Since starting the podcast, Nori has arguably become one of the most successful podcasters in the industry. When asked about his transition from a rap to a podcasting career, Nori has argued that the transition has been flawless. In an interview on the Joe Budden podcast where Nori discussed his career to date, he argued that other than Joe Budden, any rapper who's attempted to make a name for themselves in the arena of podcasting has failed miserably. You know what's crazy? I'm looking at these rappers trying shows now because, you know, rappers from our era, and they are so failing. Responding with laughter, Joe Budden responded by saying, Isn't it great? Isn't it great to see them fail? Nori then answered, they're doing sports shows, they're doing comedy shows, they're talking about they're doing this for fun. 
No, you are not. When recalling a success story of a hip-hop star transitioning out of rap music, Nori compared himself to fellow Queens rapper LL Cool J. As many know, LL Cool J, arguably one of hip-hop's first superstars, has successfully transitioned from being exclusively a rapper to creating a dense resume in the acting world, and now in the broadcasting world with the creation of his own radio station, Rock the Bells, on Sirius XM. In his interview with Joe Budden, Nori stated, It's true because, like I said, when Lior called me the other day, he kept enforcing to me the transition is everything. It's not been a lot of people to do that. You know, the only person who's been able to do this other than me, you, and a couple of others, it's LL Cool J, Ice-T. That said, having a famous podcast does not come without its problems. One super controversial moment came about in 2022 following the appearance of Kanye West, now known as Ye, on Drink Champs. After inviting Ye to the podcast where he made a number of controversial remarks about the death of George Floyd and what he termed a certain group's media, Nori took to social media to respond to the backlash over Ye's appearance on his Drink Champs podcast. In addition to commenting about the episode, executives also decided to take the episode in question down from the YouTube platform, and many argued that it was even taken out of their Google Drive folders if they had downloaded and saved it on there. In his public statement, Nori apologized to listeners and said that the conversation with Ye had served as a learning experience. When asked why he would even give Ye a platform to speak amidst the ongoing controversy surrounding his comments, that had been perceived as anti-Semitic in the press, Nori stated, I have a relationship with Ye. When he was going through a lot of things he was going through, he would call me, and he would actually listen to me and take my advice. So I felt like I could control the situation. I felt that I could control the interview. And I learned early on that I didn't. As a black man, I feel like I failed. As a human, I feel like I failed. But as a journalist, I succeeded. Because as a journalist, you're not really supposed to have an opinion. You're supposed to let people talk. Nori then went on to apologize to anybody that was hurt by Ye's words, and he added that he later challenged Ye on his comments on many of the things that he spoke about, claiming, but you don't see that until two hours into the interview. After admitting that his approach to the interview was, quote, irresponsible and that he should have addressed Ye right then and there, he also told the radio platform Hot 97 that we shouldn't give up on Ye, going on to state, I do feel like I didn't do the right job, but this is a learning experience. I did not go to school for journalism, but that's not an excuse. I should have checked him as soon as he said it. Recently, Nori even used the podcast platform to discuss the history of his own artistry, particularly the Capone and Noriega debut album that got his entire career rolling forward, The War Report, during an episode of Drink Champs that honored the album's 25th anniversary. Over the course of the episode, Nori and DJ Effin were joined by Capone, Tragedy Gaddafi, and Neil Levine, the founder of the album's record label, Penalty Recordings. In their discussion, Capone and Nori recalled how they met for the first time while incarcerated, in addition to swapping inside jokes, reminiscing about the past, hashing out old beefs, and making amends, the many people around the table also lamented the current state of the industry and how it's currently run by analytics rather than by curious, passionate a &R talent scouts that are invested in building lasting careers. In January of 2023, it was announced in the press that Nori and DJ Effin had inked a new distribution deal with Warner Music Group. This new deal would bring the audio version of their Drink Champs series to the label's in-house podcast network. Now in its eighth year, Drink Champs will be distributed via Interval Presents, a newly formed network, and will join a growing number of culture-driven podcasts such as the Rap Radar podcast. According to the network, the Drink Champs premiere episode will be available on all streaming platforms on January 27, 2023, and the visual edition of the show would still continue to be distributed through Revolt. According to the team at Interval Presents, they've been watching the podcast rise since its launch, and they argued that its irreverent and unconventional format attracted them. The team also argued that both Nori and Effin, who is himself also a pioneer of Miami's hip-hop scene, have emerged as leaders in the urban, conversational storytelling space, in large part due to the fact that the duo has been able to draw out some never-before-heard revelations by some of the biggest names in the hip-hop industry. According to Alan Coy, the network's general manager and Warner Music Group's senior vice president of digital strategy and business development, call that a tongue twister if you want to, Drink Champs has been at the forefront of cultural conversations for nearly a decade and has created some of the most iconic moments at the intersection of culture and music. They've built an incredible platform that we've admired from afar, and now we're incredibly excited to welcome them to Interval Presents. Our collaboration will focus on further amplifying Nori and FN's unique and unfiltered approach to storytelling and bringing the show to new podcast listeners. For future Drink Champs guests, Nori hinted at several high-profile interviewees that were going to come, and the interviewees would likely include the likes of Cardi B and 
many others. The move to include Cardi B on the podcast came after Nori sparked a debate within the hip-hop community when he questioned why so many rappers opt to do interviews with popular daytime and nighttime hosts, such as David Letterman, Oprah, and Ellen DeGeneres, while failing to first give those interviews to people inside hip-hop. Many onlookers quickly assumed that Nori was throwing some shade at Cardi B, given that she had just appeared on Letterman's Netflix series My Next Guest Needs No Introduction a few days prior. In the case of Keith Murray, while he was slated to appear on Drink Champs in January of this year, Nori admitted that he and DJ Effin hadn't gone through with his invitation because they're worried about his mental health. We love Keith Murray, but let's also be upfront. We're concerned. His mental health doesn't seem that we could put him in this environment and smoke and drink. Now, if he can, we gon' do it. If he can sit, he can smoke, he can drink, we gon' do it. Or he doesn't have to smoke or drink. We don't wanna... The thing is, we have responsibilities. We know there's a certain amount of people that watch us every week, every month, every mother effing year, but why would we put a rap legend in jeopardy? And that's what it's feeling like. After the wild experience that Nori and DJ Effin had after their first interview with Ye, leading to having to pull down that widely watched and loved episode, it's clear that moving forward, Drink Champs wanted to keep their guests looking and sounding their very best, especially while they're getting intoxicated. Make sure to subscribe for more.